Amaryllis reblooming is so easy. It's like one, two, buckle my shoe and boom, I've got a new bloom. Okay, sure not. I mean, yeah, it all sounds really good in theory, but I tell you what, why don't we really talk about how you actually get your amaryllis to rebloom? I'm trying to approach this from an average Joe's perspective. I mean, I've done tons of research on how to actually do this, but I'm not like some professional gardening expert or anything. So this is just from what I've figured out, just different things that have failed and other things that have succeeded and all the various research that's out there that says to do this or to do that. And believe me, a lot of it kind of contradicts itself or there's oftentimes you'll come across articles that says do this. It doesn't tell you everything you need to know. And that's what's really important is we're going to try and cover some of those details that they often miss in a lot of the videos and articles I've seen so far. Personally, with my poor little amaryllis, I actually went through two full cycles before this guy got rebloomed, which we have right now. Woohoo, look at that bloom. I unfortunately had an accident with it and uh, my little amaryllis here um, it actually got all the way up to about right here. It was a super tall stalk and uh, unfortunately um, I didn't have enough weight on the bottom and so it tilted over and the stalk broke off and now here's the result. I have him stuck in a cup and it's going to last half as long unfortunately which is really depressing. But that brings me to the first point of what you need to do to get your amaryllis to rebloom. Uh, so it's like once it's actually got its stock out there and it's growing, once you have a flower that's like this and it's starting to die compared to the other ones which are still looking good, you want to take it and just cut it back. So you want to go down here as far as you can and bam! It's gone. So once the bloom is actually completely finished and it's actually dead, um, so those last couple ones have com completely decided to wither away. Um, you want to cut this stem here back to within one inch of the bulb. So if you're saying the bulb is right here, where the actual bulb is, is officially down here. It's like I could probably go a little bit lower on this. But you want to take it down about as far as you can. So just really, realistically, um, I can't really go any further than this here. So um, I've left a little bit less than an inch, so I could have gone down about that far, and that's within an inch of the bulb right there. And uh, these guys here, though, you want, you want to make sure you're not cutting into them. So when you cut, be very careful you're not actually cutting into those guys at all. Um, otherwise, that's going to be trouble because you need these for the next stage. Why the leaves are so important is, is this is one of the main ways that you help it to create a next set of bulbs is it needs the leaves to gather and store energy from the sun. So once the flowers are gone, you want to leave this out and get as much sun as you possibly can for the next um, probably like four to five months at least is what, how long it takes. Um, it usually takes so long that the, my leaves get so big and kind of cover this whole window area where it lives and my wife starts going, Cut the thing back, it's taking over the whole area! <laughs> so, so I mean, that's kind of what's going to happen, is it's going to get so big and so scary with those leaves, hopefully, that um, you, it's gathering tons and tons of energy from these leaves, okay? That's what needs to happen. You have to have those leaves gathering as much sun as possible. If you're not getting much sun, then pull out a grow light and give it even more light, because that is its gathering energy so it can produce a new bulb next time. It has to have all that light. Now there's a couple different things about how you can start it indoors and then put it outdoors once it gets sunny in the summer and you're avoiding the frost. I'm not going to go into that too much because mine just lives inside the whole time, right in this nice little window where it gets lots of light. So I don't worry about going inside and outside. I just put it right here and get it as much lighted as I humanly can, get it closer to the window. And uh, like I said, I can put a grow light on it if I need to. Most anything that has an LED light can help. So the next thing is, is how to feed it and, and not overwater it. Now, uh, my trick that I always uh, tell people is, is um, you want it to get somewhat dry. So when you, if the soil feels dry, so if you stick your finger in it a little ways like this, um, so just like up to the first knuckle, you'll and feel if it's wet at all. If it is, 
it can probably stand to last a little bit longer without watering but you want to water it frequently because especially once the leaves get out there you're probably going to be watering it at least once a day um but before then it could be every other day or so so like right now that's what i'm doing with him because his leaves are smaller um her leaves sorry this is amy the amaryllis um she only gets watered about once every other day because the leaves haven't grown out, out enough and it's not warm enough yet to really be gathering that much energy that the water is getting used up that fast. So you put your finger in there about up to the first knuckle and if it still feels moist at all, it doesn't necessarily need to be watered again just yet. If anything, you know, err on the side of not going too heavy because that is one of the biggest mistakes people make is that they overwater their plants. So just be careful. Don't overwater, okay? Once it's in this stage, you do want to fertilize it. And usually, um, I, I go with it that you actually do it once every other week. You can do it once a month, um, but I like doing it uh, once every other week to keep make sure it's keeping a good amount of nutrients in there. And there's a variety of different things people say. You, you can just use a very a standard one. You can use a seaweed extract. Fish emulsion is a really good one for them. So uh, the type of feed, uh, there's a couple different kinds you can use, but the main thing is is that once a month at the least, if not once every other week, and it really is just dependent on uh, how much you want to give it and uh, how well you can remember on making sure you are feeding it. So you need to make sure you're setting up a schedule and it's getting fed once a month to once every other week. So last and most definitely not least is the dormancy period, and to me, this is the most important time. I'm not, I can't stress this enough. Most important! Okay, this is the period I think that doesn't get enough focus, especially through most of the articles I've seen. They tend to say like, oh, just let it go and go in a cold, dark area, preferably a basement. It's about the 45 to 55 degree Fahrenheit range, and I'm gonna put up the Celsius here because I can't think of it off the top of my head. And you want it in a nice dry location that's away from any lights. For me, I actually just put it in my coat closet, which is generally cool, and it's completely dark in there, and I actually put it in a little box, so it's definitely away from any light. Now, the problem I had when trying to regrow this guy is once it gets to the dormancy period, First thing you need to do actually is this, um, you need to cut all these leaves off. So you need to cut them all the way back to about right here. So going to about the same area where you cut back the, uh, the stem to, so you're just cutting it all the way back. So there's nothing left but this. Now there's two theories about how you can store this guy. One is you just take it exactly like this once you cut the leaves off and you just put this whole uh, pot right in a box or somewhere away from light and you'll leave it just like this. The other theory is, is you take it out of the dirt and you leave it with just the bulb. And I've heard theories that say both sides work. I've only done it with it in the dirt, okay? So that's my side, that's what I've done so far. And here's what's happened with the mixed results, okay? The first couple of times that it, I did this and it didn't rebloom, I did it exactly according to the numbers of a couple of articles that I read, which said that you can only leave it in storage for about six to eight weeks, okay? And I did that, and it failed, okay? Twice. So it's been like 18 months at least, if not a year, since this guy had last flowered because of these failures, and now until I luckily got these guys to come out. Yay! That isn't enough, okay? The six to eight weeks isn't necessarily enough. Part of it's due to your climate, part of it's just due to where you're keeping it, and uh, another part of it is just how much sun and stuff it got before it went into dormancy. So I actually read a few articles that said it actually can go longer than six to eight weeks. In fact, it can go up to five months according to some articles. Five months, yeah. And uh, so what I did is I actually went a little bit closer this time to four months. Four months, yeah. And it, it got the flower to come back. Now, I read a recent article that just actually kind of blew my mind, like, why didn't I think of this before? Is what you do is after about six weeks, you just go in and look at it. You go in and look and see if it's got a bloom started yet. So if you can see the starts of a new bloom, then it's like, okay, I can take it out. No, because you know it's going to rebloom. It already has one showing up. I mean, common sense, right? 
And if it doesn't, you just put it back in storage for another week or two and then check it again. And if it's still if not there yet, you leave it in storage for a little bit longer until you see one come out. Um, but like I said, at the most, you want to go five months. So if one's not showing up at five months, it means you probably just didn't give it enough light and get enough time on the leaves and stuff beforehand. It could be any of the other factors we talked about before. But the dormancy period is the most important. You cut the leaves back, you put it in storage to make sure that it's um, away from any light and it's in a nice cool place. Again, the period is six weeks up to five months, okay? But start checking on it. That's my new rule of what I'm gonna do with these guys, is after six weeks, I'm gonna check on it to see if it has a bloom showing up yet. Then if not, I'm gonna leave it away again for another two weeks or so, check it again. And then if it's not, I'm gonna leave it away again and check it again. Because this time, when I've left it four months, it actually had such a big bloom that I could have actually pulled it out of storage a little bit earlier, I think. And that's part of the reason that the stock got so huge that it ended up toppling over and breaking, okay? So, this waiting too long can actually be a detriment too, and you'll suffer the same fate I did and have a poor broken amaryllis, okay? And you don't want that either, right? Because this means now my bloom's gonna be lasting half if not less as long as it would have been if it remained on the stock okay so that's just painful i mean especially after waiting 18 months to two years to see this guy again now i have to put him back in storage and uh, hopefully not break a stem next time sorry so once you're actually ready to pull it out of storage here's what you do okay you want to take it and if it's already in some dirt what you're going to do is you're going to take it and you're gonna take the top layer of dirt out and put some new dirt in. That's one way to do it. That's all I did with this guy last time and it did rebloom perfectly fine. The, the other theory says that you actually just take all this dirt out and you repot it. You just put it in a new pot and you make sure that this isn't sitting too low in the dirt. You know, a lot of people say that I probably could have left this a bit higher in the dirt, that you don't wanna go above this bulb down all the way down here. So I could have went a little bit higher with this. They say you definitely you can actually leave this part of the bulb a little bit exposed, okay? But either way, you're gonna put some new dirt in there with it, okay? Um, whether it's the whole thing or just uh, part of it where you re uh, take out this much dirt and you refill the rest, either one is feasible, okay? Both can work. It's a matter of what you think you can do and what works for you, all right? All this stuff is variable and it also depends on climate and different things. So, I mean, don't be too scared about it and thinking, oh, I'm doing this wrong. There's various ways you can get this to work, okay? But yep, yeah, that's about it. That's uh, how to rebloom your amaryllis. If you have any more questions, please let me know in the comments section down below. Um, my question for today is, uh, do you actually have an amaryllis? I would assume so. If you're watching this video, please tell me all about it. What color is yours? Mine's obviously this nice pink and white. If you like this video, it does me a big favor if you hit that like button, subscribe, of course, and share it with your friends. Until next time, be kind to each other and happy reblooming.